Hello and welcome back to the Bird Artist Cottage. I'm Tara Kate and Happy New Year. Happy 2022. This is my first video in the new year. I took a little bit of time off for the holiday so it's been a little while since I've been here with you and I am really looking forward to bringing you today's video which is my art review of 2021. I do an extensive annual review every year guided by a template from a book called Your Best Year by a gal named Lisa Jacobs. She's no longer doing that kind of work, although I think the book is still available on Amazon. And the version that I'm using is the professional version, but I've kind of adapted it to my own needs, added a lot of journaling prompts. It's actually quite an extensive review template and it can take me a couple of weeks sometimes to get through the whole thing but i've been doing it for four years straight i believe this is my fourth or fifth year doing it and i have had truly such great results from the kind of review and planning that this process gives to me and this year i added a much more extensive and formal review process for my art practice and that's what i'll be sharing with you today is some of the background and results on how that turned out for me before i get to the review though i wanted to take an opportunity to invite you to join my patreon my patreon is a place for people who love beauty nature and birds and it's a place where I am really investing myself, especially in this new year, to add even more content and to share even more behind the scenes than I've ever done before. One of the things about social media that is often really unfulfilling or unsatisfactory is that it's very difficult to form real relationships where we get to share our expertise, our know-how, and our experience with one another. And so my intention and desire for Patreon is that I create a supportive and engaged and close-knit community where we can really grow and learn together as artists and as people. If you value artistic expression, growth, personal development, then I know that you're going to love what I have to offer. So I'd briefly like to tell you about the three tiers. First is Feathered Friends. Feathered Friends get a weekly behind the scenes update, a monthly wallpaper for their phones, as well as a monthly patrons only vlog post. And it's in this blog post that I get to share a lot of the behind the scenes of my thinking, growth, and development, both as a person and as an artist, things that I would not normally share here on YouTube. It's really an opportunity for me to be vulnerable and emotionally honest in ways that feel safe and also to provide my patrons with encouragement, support, and resources to help them grow as people and as artists. The $10 tier is Lucky Ducks, and this is where the sketchbook tour rewards start. Every month, Lucky Ducks receive a blog post with lots and lots of photographs of my sketchbook. And these are photographs that I don't share elsewhere, not here on YouTube and not on Instagram. You'll also receive computer wallpaper, and a 10% discount on my Etsy shop. Happy Larks is where you start to get mail rewards. This is my sticker rewards tier where you get a sticker every month along with a video recorded sketchbook tour every month. It takes you through the entire month of all of my sketching. As you may know, I sketch every single day and I fill a lot of pages. And these are sketches that I don't normally share, but you'll get to see them as a happy lark along with conversation and explanation and my thoughts about what I'm working on and how I'm learning to draw birds even better. You'll also receive a handmade zine with my original artwork. These handmade zines are limited editions. They're numbered and signed. They are printed works, but they're my original artwork. And once those handmade zines, each edition is given out, there'll never be another one like it. So it's a unique opportunity to receive original artwork in a signed and numbered zine, and you get your first zine after three months of patronage as a happy lark. I want to create a Patreon experience for you that is rich and special. 
I hope that you'll consider joining me. Now, let's take a look at the 2021 art review. See you at the end of the video. This year, I did a more extensive annual review for my art, and that's what I'll be sharing with you today. So the first journaling question that I want to uh, cover is how do I feel that my year 2021 went for me artistically? And when I first started doing this review, I really felt that I had underperformed in 2021. I did not complete as many pieces as I had really wanted to. I felt that um, 2021 really wasn't much of a success and as it turns out with a lot of my reviews when I start comparing what I intended to do with what I actually did and started like writing down what I actually accomplished I realized that I had actually done quite a lot more than I thought I had done so I'm going to show you some of the pieces that I'm pleased with and some of the pieces I'm not so pleased with. But I also want to um, acknowledge that I was part of two joint uh, shows. I had a joint show uh, here in Corvallis, Oregon early in the year and then a second group exhibition that I was part of in Portland, Oregon later in the year. So that's two shows. And those were my first two shows. I was also featured in Uppercase Magazine in their 50th edition, which was about art and science. And I got a book contract, which is huge for me as a natural history science bird illustrator. So obviously, I didn't do too badly. One of the questions in the review that I did was, what do you feel are your most successful pieces? And so I'm going to start with that. So at the beginning of 2021, I was preparing for my first show and applying for the second show. So I was finishing up the series of birds in graphite. And there were three pieces that I produced there at the very beginning of 2021 that I feel are among the most successful pieces I've ever done. The first is this piece of the trio of rough-winged swallows. You may remember this from a previous vlog episode, and I will link to it in a card above. I loved creating this piece of art. It's the largest piece that I've done so far in graphite. It's 16 by 20, and it depicts these three recently fledged young juvenile rough-winged swallows that are really beginning their very first migratory journey southward. So they were hatched sometime in the summer of 2021. It's possible that these three birds were even siblings. And I absolutely love the depiction of how the birds look on this curved, thorny blackberry branch and the way that the, the middle bird is kind of hidden behind the perch. The top bird is not really looking at us, the viewer. And then the third bottom bird is kind of peeking out from behind the branch as if he's looking at us, the viewer. I was very, very pleased with how this turned out. And this, this piece means a great deal to me. The other two pieces that I produced that were in the show in Portland, Oregon, were these two wren tits. So the bird on the right is the one that sold. And I really think it's a little bit better than the one on the left, but I really like how both of these turned out. And I remember as I was drawing these, as particularly the one on the right, I felt a tremendous sense of fulfillment and joy and satisfaction with how the work was going. So I really love how these three pieces came out, and they were really sort of the end of this series in graphite. Although I did do one more in graphite, and that's this Chiloé widgeon. And I drew this particular piece for a, an intended Skillshare class and then lost some of the middle of the class video. So the video never got published as a Skillshare class. But this was really the last very extensive piece in graphite that I did. And that was still pretty early in 2021. And I think because I was completing these pieces so early in the year, that may be part of what contributed to my sense that I didn't accomplish very much because I finished this series in graphite and then you know didn't go back and do any more pieces in that series because the series was finished. 
One of the other pieces that I feel like was quite successful is this American Goldfinch. This was the first piece that I did in Gansai Tambi, which is the opaque Japanese watercolor. And I, again, this is another photograph that Douglas took. And I really love uh, the treatment of the teasel that the bird is perched on. I feel like I was much more successful in realistically rendering the teasel. And I really love just the overall look and feel of this piece and how the bird is perched there on this, this natural object. The next piece that I think was really successful is this common yellow throat in colored pencil. In June, we started traveling, and so I was doing more work while we were on the go, and then when we did our massive summer road trip, I really didn't do any art at all. So this was really one of the last pieces I did before we started traveling. And I really love the, the colors. I like the um, kind of the depth of shadowing. I really enjoyed the look and feel of the textures and how the leaves kind of blend off into the background with the with the very sharp and clear yellow throat there in the foreground and this one I turned into a sticker and I'm really really quite fond of it. I'm also quite pleased with how this little Hutton's Vireo turned out. This was in watercolor in one of my sketchbooks. Again, this is one that got turned into a sticker for my Etsy shop. And I really, really like the very alert attitude of the bird and just the overall treatment of the vegetation and the bird himself. This is another piece that I painted in Gansai Tambi. It's of F at 2, the trumpeter swan that spent the spring here with us in the Corvallis area. She has not returned yet, so I don't know if she is still alive or not. I'm keeping an eye out for her and hoping that she will be back soon. This was also painted in Gansai Tambi in my sketchbook, and I really do love how this turned out. This felt very satisfying to me and very pleasant. And I think part of the reason I liked this one so much is because this is a real bird and I know her story and where she was hatched and where she was seen. And so this feels like a, a real person to me in a way because it's a, a bird that I saw myself and got to observe myself and, uh, and, and then painted this, this illustration of her. Another piece that I feel was quite successful and that I'm really very pleased with is this field of dahlias. I took this photograph myself. It's one island dahlias in Canby, Oregon, and then came back and painted this piece in my sketchbook. I don't normally paint landscapes and florals, as you know, and I was quite delighted and very pleased with how this came out. I did a kind of a dark purpley brown underpainting and then did all of the leaves and flowers over that and really, really love how this turned out, that it was loose. I feel like I really successfully captured the perspective of the flowers uh, disappearing off into the background. And this is another piece that I'm quite pleased with. This Keelbill Toucan was painted in Gansai Tambi, and this is for a Skillshare class that I am still working on editing, so hopefully we'll finish sometime soon and be able to publish it. I really, really love this toucan, and I very much like how realistic the tail feathers look. Um, I think the color overall turned out quite nice. This is one that I turned into a print and a sticker on my Etsy shop and am quite delighted with how this piece turned out in terms of just the realism, the texture, and the overall look and feel of the painting.
These boxes, Swifts, are far and away my favorite piece that I painted in 2021. There's so many things I love about these, and if you'd like to see me doing the painting of these, there's an entire vlog episode dedicated to this painting. So many things that I love about this. One, I love the colored paper and how loose I was. I am normally a very tight, very controlled painter, and I was much, much looser with this one. I love this bird in the foreground who seems to be looking directly at us as at the viewer. And then the other Vox's Swifts in the sky, sort of silhouetted as one typically sees them uh, when you get to observe them. And we do see them here um, in Corvallis. This Vox's Swift is our chimney swift here in the western United States and a bird that I'm really quite fond of. And just absolutely love how I did not overwork this. The sort of happy accidents in the brush strokes, especially on the sky, and how I did not allow myself to cover up all of the paper that some of the paper is showing through. The value change that I achieved around the bird's face. The way that there's that sort of light right behind the head that really draws the eye into the, to the bird's face. I, I really, really love this, and far and away, this is the piece that I completed in 2021 that I am the most happy with. Now, having talked about the pieces that I'm happy with, let's talk about the ones that I'm not so pleased with. You may remember, if you've watched my vlog for any length of time, that I recorded an episode where I went out sketching outdoors and I was talking about starting a 100-day project on trees. Well, my 100-day project on trees was a dismal, <laughs> dismal failure. Uh, yeah, that was just so bad. And man, trees are hard. And I was working in ink, as you can see here in this particular piece. And basically nothing seemed to go well. I started sketching. I got, uh, I think I maybe have got five or six days into this 100 day project and then just completely, completely gave up. Although there's some things about it that, you know, looking at these, I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> maybe these weren't so horrible, but they're pretty bad. And, uh, yeah, it's hard to even know what to say about this, except that, that the complexity of the branches and leaves really got to me. The challenge of, I mean, that is just so sad. And it was so demoralizing. So that's number three of 100. And by then I was already, this was one of the ones I drew while I was out trying to film, actually. That's drawn at Chipros uh, Natural Area, just north of Corvallis. It was just so demoralizing. And I was so, I was so upset with myself. It's really, I, mean, I stopped and look at this and think, okay, I remember sitting there in the parking lot trying to draw this tree. This little church is just right around the corner from here and sat there in the parking lot trying to draw this tree and trying not to get like too caught up in all of the details and to capture the values and to capture the shape. And it just felt like it was just too much for me. And I felt so overwhelmed. Here I'm trying on day five back with the same tree that I drew there uh, from life. So this tree is this tree. I think this is in ballpoint. Trying to work from photo is just, yeah, and trying to even put in the background. It's just terrible. By the way, that cute little raccoon is, what's his name? Newt. If you follow Juniper Fox on Instagram, you may recognize Newt. I think Newt was more successful than a tree, obviously. Here's another tree with me asking myself, am I making progress? That was day six out of 100. <laughs> and that's where I quit. That was day six. So the 100 day of trees, dismal failure. Another project that 
failed in 2021 was this idea I had about doing a series of illustrations of female birds. And this project is still very near and dear to my heart. It's still a project I would very much like to do. But this illustration here on the right is the one that sent me into a tailspin because when I started working on the feathers on her back and got lost in these, these very loose open feathers and trying to capture that. I can't tell you how many times I painted over the back of this little female fairy wren and finally just completely gave up. Let's see, I think there's another study in here perhaps. Ah, here's another concept study for the same illustration that I was trying to start. So the concept illustration here is that female fairy wrens, these are superb fairy wrens, they live in Australia. Female fairy wrens wake up before dawn and slip off and have sex with neighboring males that are not their mates. So multiple males father her offspring, and this is one of the ways that she gets more genetic diversity in her clutch. So she has a male mate, but she sneaks off and in the pre-dawn hours, mates with her neighbors. Presumably, while she's away, her mate is mating with neighboring females who come to visit him. So I had this idea for this illustration and, the, and this was the other concept sketch where the male is sleeping in the background, she's away, stars in the sky. And again, I just got lost in the complexity. I got overwhelmed and intimidated by my vision for the illustration. Something similar happened with this one. This is a female brown-headed cowbird and she has just parasitized a nest. So cowbirds don't have anything to do with cows. Um, they're, they don't hang around cows. They don't drink milk. There are all sorts of weird stories about cowbirds on the internet. But the true story is that female cowbirds find nests of other songbirds and lay their eggs in those nests. And then they leave and they never see their offspring. And so this was going to be another bird in the female bird story. I started the painting using traditional gouache, which I had not used before, kind of struggled my way through getting the eggs, and then just got discouraged and quit. And at that point, I stopped trying to illustrate any of the birds in the series, and that series just died right there. I think another thing that contributed to my feelings of dissatisfaction was the unfinished works. For example, this little illustration that is of a woodland lily with the forest background behind it. I was again painting in traditional gouache here, so very inexperienced with the medium. As I look at this, I really, really wished I had finished this painting because as I look at the background, I think, well, you know, for a first try, that's actually not too, too bad. And so part of what contributes to my dissatisfaction with work like this is that I didn't finish it. And the same is true with this little woodland sunflower relative, that there was a lot of complexity in the background. There's a lot of complexity in the foreground for that matter. And when I look at it, I think, wow, you know, if I had continued and persevered on this, this might not be a bad piece, but I got discouraged. And so I didn't finish it. And I allowed my discouragement and not finishing to completely derail my progress on learning this kind of painting and this kind of illustration because I would just give up. And so that contributed a great deal to some of my feelings of dissatisfaction about how my artistic year went for 2021. Another thing I noticed 
particularly as I was putting together all of these pieces to share with you today. I've done a very poor job of curating my own work. And as I was trying to put together sort of the chronological progress that I made over the year, I had trouble even finding some of the pieces that I had done. So if we start in this sketchbook, so in this sketchbook, which is my Strathmore Mixed Media, you might be able to see down here in the corner, this is March and it says 25100. I'm 90% sure, I'm almost 100% sure that I finished this 100 days, but I can't find like the last portion of the 100 day project. I have no idea where I was doing those drawings. So you see that I started out with these uh, robins. Some of these sketches I think showed up in a sketchbook tour for the vlog. Here we are, day 31 of 100 with these herons. And then if I flip forward, now we're on day 42. All right, here we are with wattled jacanas. This was a bird for the female bird project that died, but I love this little jacana here in watercolor. Dunnock, Dunnock, another bird for the uh, potential series on female birds. There's the superb berry wren. She was 49 of 100. Well, where's 50? Who knows? I didn't even date this. So then work picks back up with me working in on loose sheets of paper. And the reason I started working on loose sheets of paper was because I was feeling very insecure about my sketching and then beginning to do some of the preliminary sketching in anticipation that I might be getting this book contract there on uh, July the 21st. So lots and lots and lots of sketches in here, some of which turned into things and others didn't. This sketch of an acorn woodpecker turned into a fully realized illustration that became a sticker that's in my Etsy shop. Then I just started trying to do 10 birds a day, just trying to gain some more confidence in my sketching still in July here. Still working on birds that might turn into sketches for the book project. And then it was about in November that I started to actually feel some real confidence again in my sketching. And that was due to just continuous daily practice. I actually started drawing birds in flight, which I had never done before, and actually found that not only are they not that hard to draw, I always thought they were too hard, that they are not that hard to draw. And furthermore, I absolutely love drawing birds in flight. And so this is when the year started to transform for me, even though <laughs> we're in November now. But this daily practice of drawing several birds a day, sometimes only one, but often many birds a day, started to really transform my feelings about what I was doing and how I was doing it and the kind of progress I was making as an artist. And I'll just flip through some of these, whether some of these are the studies of a single species like this Darien Redstart, or all flying birds, painted stork, glossy ibis, Himalayan swift, all from India. And then another thing started to happen. I started drawing little groups of birds. And so my, my practice evolved again. And I went from feeling like I was sketching things that were very static or lifeless or somehow just not quite right to flying birds and then suddenly doing groups of birds. And then I decided, wow, I feel much more confident with my sketching. Maybe I could start sketching in a sketchbook. And so I started this sketchbook and you may recognize there's that common yellow throat that I showed you a few minutes ago. And then my work evolved again. 
a few days into working in the sketchbook, I had one day where I had a bit more time and I started drawing one bird and then another and then another and filled the entire page, fitting all of these different sketches together. And it was just a completely different experience for me for creating a complex spread with many different birds depicted on the one spread followed the next day by this white-breasted water hen. I have never even heard of a water hen before. This is an Indian bird. Sketching this bird as it's preening itself with its head underneath its wing and one foot upraised with the perspective of the pavement on which the bird was standing with a little bit of background drawn there. This is a great sign of progress for me. And then another spread where I fitted several different sketches together to make a single spread. This is a complete evolution of my work from this work that was done on July the 21st of these juniper titmice, titmouses, we'll say titmouse, titmices. These juniper titmouses, which sounds terrible, we're going to move on to this spread, which feels amazing to me and even has hippos with this ibis. So much fun to sketch these hippos. And then I'll show you the very first drawing of 2022 is this great horned owl. So this huge shift in progress from feeling very uncomfortable with my sketching, feeling very uh, inadequate with my ability to sketch birds, and feeling especially inadequate with my ability to get proportions right. At the beginning of 2021, I was using a proportional divider and measuring every angle and measuring every proportion with a proportional divider to do my fully realized drawings, like the swallows that I started out talking about at the beginning here to this where I measured everything by eye and did this with uh, the credit color leads that I got for Christmas and it's very loose and the proportions are fine and wow it's just a huge huge difference so when I look back on 2021, what I see is that I made a great deal more progress than I gave myself credit for, and that what contributed the most and what actually gave me the most satisfaction was the daily practice of drawing one or two or three birds or sometimes more every day and how that contributed to my sense of growth and progress and what it taught me in terms of being able to measure angles and proportions by eye. So now having done this review, I feel that 2021 was actually quite successful for me as I have started the compositional sketching for the illustrations for the book. So now all the preliminary sketches are done and I am now taking those preliminary sketches, the ones that the author wants to see develop into full illustrations, and each one of those is now going into a compositional sketch. And as I'm doing those compositional sketches, I can already see and feel how much more confident I am. One of the things I'm a little concerned about is the backgrounds again. Doing landscapes and backgrounds has been a perennial problem of mine. It's one that I've never really conquered. And as you can see, my efforts in 2021 often met with me getting intimidated or discouraged and giving up. And I now don't have that luxury. I have to get this together and get it right this time. So I know there are going to be some challenges for me artistically in 2022, but I also see how the work that I've done in 2021 has strengthened my abilities and skills as an artist and is going to greatly contribute to the work that I produce this year. So that's the annual review. And if you have any questions, please do leave those in the comments below. Thanks.
talk about Instagram for a moment because I am hearing people talking about how Instagram may or may not be contributing to their development as artists. And I know some people get a lot out of creating for Instagram, and I'm not one of those people. I have a daily sketchbook practice, and I show up every day and draw. And some of those drawings are worth sharing, and many of them are not. But I am not creating for Instagram. I'm not creating for my work to be seen, and I'm not creating my work to be shared necessarily. Now that's not to say that I don't sometimes shoot flat light photographs of my sketchbook and post to Instagram. And I haven't quit Instagram, even though I've given it serious consideration. So a post only gets engagement and exposure for about the first 24, not even really 40, eight hours. So it's really less than two days. Then as creators, we're pushed to create and create and create and post and post and post. And that is really not conducive to growth as an artist. If you are an artist and you really want to grow, a daily practice will help you do that. But I think posting to Instagram is very much detrimental to that growth. And it pushes us in ways that I think are very it detracts from our ability to really engage with our own process and show up for ourselves. I think it's very, very important as artists that we show up for ourselves first and that we are committed to our craft first. And that if we're using social media, that we're using it and not letting us, it, use us. So. I could say a lot more about Instagram. I'm trying not to turn this into a rant, but I did want to address these thoughts that I've been having about how Instagram might hurt us as artists if we really want to grow and learn and develop toward our aspirations wherever it is that we wish to take our craft. So enough about that. I hope that you enjoyed the review. There is an entire video on the painting of my Voxes Swift, which was my favorite painting of 2021, and you can watch that video here. Hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye now.